Hi, I'm Mark Savory. Welcome back to VTB TV. Part two. Part two. How you doing, man? I'm I'm doing great. This is a beautiful setting. There's a beautiful picture there. Do you ever do any artwork? I never do any artwork. <laughs> What's your what do you I mean people know about your music? Mm-hmm. Yep, oh, love that. You ride bikes? Yes. What's what else is there? A lot of time. What would people be really surprised to hear about? <sighs> Man, spend a lot of time with the crew here. Um, you know, when it's the off season, do a lot of. I don't know. I love. I used to love fishing. I don't really have a lot of time I for. I don't it picture all. you being patient enough to. I picture you just with like a net behind the boat, <laughs> just like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say that for sure. Uh, music and. Yeah, riding, and I like, I like to fish. I like to hike a lot. I do a lot of hiking, a lot, well, a lot of hiking with the dog, wife. You're yeah. like an outdoorsy guy? Definitely love the outdoors. That's what we live in Western Mass for. You're it's like an L.L. Bean catalog kind of guy? No, mostly Rafa. Mostly a Rafa kind of guy. That was, that was smooth. <laughs> if, you could be on the, if you could be on the cover of any magazine, cycling or not, what would it be? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. If you could co-star in a movie hmm. with any Adam lead, Sandler. with any lead actress, oh. like you could do a rom-com with anybody, and there's like a hot makeout scene, who would it be? <laughs> who would that be? I, I don't know. I'm bad with movies. You should know if you if you know me, then you know I'm really bad with movies. Who's your dream girl after your wife? <laughs> That's a great question too. I, I don't I don't know. You're asking. You're, I just I don't know. You know, you say one thing and then everyone hates that person, and that's like, oh, I don't know. My, I like Zoe Deschanel myself. <laughs> I don't even know that. I, what, I mean, what's I can, your favorite I can, movie? Do you have a favorite movie? Every Adam Sandler movie, like yeah. Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, I could name just about any of those. I could name the, I could pretty much recite the entire Dave Chappelle, all seasons. I could recite every Chris Rock comedy sketch. Um, but I'm not a movie guy. I'm definitely not. I mean, I'm, I loved Wedding Crashers. Pissed myself watching that movie. <laughs> and I still do. I, I'll, I'll always put it on. A <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah. Who's the funniest cyclocross racer in North America? Who do you who do you like to hang out with at the races? Truthfully, my favorite cyclocross racer is Jamie Driscoll. <clears throat> you think Jamie's funny? I just like James. He's always been he's always been very down to earth. He's a good guy. Um, I I I get on with Tim and Ryan because we've we've been through a lot together. Uh, Tim is like t Tim is like this for me. It, it's, it's we have a weird relationship. Like we're you know at one point we were teammates best friends, biggest competitors. I mean, we're all these things, so it's hard to be. I think when Tim and I are both retired, I could see us bro jaying out a lot more. Who's the guy, after you know they had a bad race, you don't want to be around that guy? <sighs> Me. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, I'd, hard to say. Maybe John Page? I don't know. That's true. That... Uh, the other side of that question would be my favorite person to interview after they had a bad race. <laughs> definitely John Page. Okay, yeah, I mean Ryan. Ryan doesn't hide it either. You know, he lets it. But that's just that's the greatest thing about sports, man. I mean, just look through history. You know, look at like all those chopped up edited videos with like rap songs behind them. You know, it's just it's like the Bears coach. Who's the Bears coach? Ditka. Uh, yeah, Ditka, yeah. Whatever. I mean, that's like that's like one of the greatest moments. And he was just he was just angry about how the team. Oh, that, the Bears, you know, it's like he was pissed. And so that's some of the greatest moments. I mean, you can never hide that. Who's the most naturally gifted, talented cyclocross racer in North America? Man or woman? I've always said Adam Craig is the most talented bike handler I ever knew, uh, for sure. I mean, I remember when we were growing up, he would do stuff on the bike that no one else ever did, and he would ride sections without being stronger just legitimately technically gifted uh in a way that i had never seen before so 
I would say that he was definitely the biggest, for me, he, he had the biggest potential technically. And, and, and I don't know, over the years there have been so many. I mean, Jesse was just the most incredible rider when he was a junior. Like, he, he was just... He was running. He was running into the elite races, and he was starting to like do lap times. I mean, he was Jesse Anthony was a good rider when he was when he was younger, and then he grew up. I think faster than others. I don't, I don't know. He just started to focus more on the road, and and you start to see both kind of go mm -hmm. decent. But then you know Jesse stopped racing cyclocross, and then road went way better, and he started to win stages on the on the higher level. And so, You're talking about Adam Craig, You're talking about bike handling. Sure. Why are you so bad in the mud? I don't push a big gear. <laughs> Why don't you just push a big gear? This is not my skill set. Can know? that be learned? I mean, people, you talk about like the physiology. We talked about this in Al's interview about, about sure. coaching and training. <clears throat> to some extent, you're, you're born with a package for where you can go physically. Mm. Is there a limit to bike handling? Can you just, why don't you just work at it more? Why can't you be, or, or is there something that you're born with or something that certain people can do better than others? Why is Zach McDonald so good? Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that there's, I mean, there's just that, it's the same reason that some guy walks up to a basketball and hits three pointers, you know, and it's the same reason that I go well on a fast track and this guy goes well on a muddy track. I mean, that's what makes it sport. That's what people look for, you know, there's like, when I, I would say, like, you know, something, one, one of the reasons that I really love to like ride the stairs or to jump that thing or mm -hmm. to, to, you know, nail that section uh, when other people can't, it's because I feel like that, that you can't make that up. Yeah. That's real. Like that's something that I have always done. You know, the first time that that speaking to Al, like he met me, I we did a cycle cross race. I think I jumped a log that was probably this high. Um, I I just always that was always something that I liked doing. I always liked doing. Yeah, I just I liked being able to do stuff that other people couldn't, and I rode things that other people wouldn't be able to do. And and to speak to mud specifically, I think when you're coming from here, but you're here now. And then the top is here. It's still, you have to look at how far someone went. Um, and I definitely wouldn't say that I've perfected the mud, but I think that I've gotten, I'm, I'm, I'm in it. And there was a time when, even a couple of years ago, that I wasn't even in the race in the mud. And so I think for me, I look at more the big macro and how far I've come with being able to do that versus the micro, which is that I'm still not as good as the best guys in the world. Will you ever be the best guy in the world? I'm excited to win a race in the mud. <laughs> I'm excited to win a big race in the mud. Definitely, that's something that I think about, and I'm like, yep, there's going to be a time when I'm able to win a big race in the mud. And, and I think next year with looking at just racing cyclocross and being able to focus in these earlier months on those specific things, that's the things that I'm speaking to when I say there's somewhere for me to go, and one of those places for me to go is to be a better runner and to be a better mud rider. Who's the most influential person <clears throat> in your career? Who's had the biggest impact on you? God, there's a couple of people. Uh, I mean, you can say you can you can say me. If you <laughs> <laughs> Jonas Carney was big influencer on me because uh, I was my first year on Jelly Belly with him, and he taught me about like uh, Jonas just brings something to the table that no one else has ever brought. He just brings this intensity this enthusiasm and this energy and excitement that I, I see it in his guys all the time when we were racing on the road. Uh, he has the ability to motivate people like no other person. I mean, he's just like, yeah, let's do this, yeah! But it's, it's genuine, and you just don't see that with, you know, this like everybody put their hand in and throw it up. That's, it's a different thing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's way more intense, and, and it feels real when, when Jonas is saying it. Um, Danny Pate changed my impression of how talented someone could be. Um, this was in that same time period. Mm. But, you know, I was, I remember specifically in, in 05 being at um, Philadelphia, racing that race, and me and Pate and Bryce Jones, Kando, uh, we had all been training, like, long hours in Arkansas out of Bryce Jones' parents' house, and <laughs> we were all cooked. We had all done 100 miles, and we were all completely effed. And Danny Pate was like, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to ride two more hours and motor pace for it. And we all were like, what? <laughs> because we had all checked out. We were completely flogged. I mean, there was nothing left. You weren't to like a junior either. You were no. a professional bike racer. Yeah, for two point. years. Yeah. Um, 
And then I would be checking out of races. It would be three, four hours in. I'd be like, I can't do anymore. I had already flogged bottles. I had already sat on the front. I had already done, already done this. And Danny would be going off the front. Um, Danny Pate is definitely, that opened my eyes to me thinking that, oh my God, all these guys are doing drugs or all these guys are so much, you know, Danny Pate, he changed that for me because that's the most talented person I've ever seen put a leg over a bike You're that I had experience with. Yeah. That's not to say that, you know, Danielson or Van Develt and yeah, these yeah, other yeah, guys, yeah. But, but for me to physically race with someone, Danny Pate was the most talented guy I ever saw put a leg over a bike. We talked about mud's not, not so good, mm. dry is good, going to Europe. If you could race, if you could just take the 10 best dudes in the world, mm. let's say you're one of them, which I think we could argue you are. Sure. You could just go anywhere for one day <clears throat> and just race. Where would you want to go? What course? Not Belgium. <laughs> um, oh, man. What course do you want to take on the best in the world on? I loved uh, the Gloucester race last year. I would make some modifications, but I really loved that. You know, I would have loved to have raced Louisville Dry. Um, I, I really believe that I had a chance definitely there for uh, definitely a top 10, and that was my goal. Um, it's hard to say. There's so many different courses and things that suit me well, and I would say that for me, it's any track that I can make a, a difference on that someone else can't. Like those things we were talking about with riding certain sections, you know? If I could if I could ride that log or if I could if I could nail those mm -hmm. barriers or if I could sneak up that, you know, hard run up on the lime stairs that other people can't and make two seconds. You know, those are the types of courses that are that are good for me. The fast, super fast, but really punchy, I do really well on. I'm not a diesel. You see like a guy like Jamie Driscoll, really good diesel. Mm -hmm. Jared Powers, punchy, um, yeah. When you won your first national championship, mm -hmm. cross the line, dude, you were such a, you were, you were, you were a big old baby. Yeah. You just cried it out. Yes. You were just so happy. You'd finally done it. Mm. If you win nationals for a second time, what's the emotion there? It's a totally different motivator going into it. You've already done it. It's not trying to get the monkey off your back. No. What do you look forward to about trying to do that? Oh, you know. Is it is it relief? Are you as ex do you do you break down again? Is it always that? I I don't. I mean, I still think about nationals. It was a really special, uh, definitely one of the key moments of my life. You know, I've been working on this thing, and it's not for me. It wasn't just oh. You know, it had eluded me as a junior and as an under 23 and as a pro for many years. I had trained super hard to get to that point and I'd gotten super close to getting it and I never got it. I had been second, third, fourth. I had been in it. I had been riding in the front. I had, I had legitimately had nationals won. Remember that many one time in Bend? Times. <laughs> Not, I wouldn't say one, but I mean, it was close. Uh, there was yeah. definitely, barring any major disasters, which seemed to have happened every time. So yeah, so definitely I, I, I cried because I, I really wanted something for so long and I finally had gotten it. And, and I think going into it again, I'm still emotional about it, I guess, if we're going to talk about that aspect. But I think that the allure, the, the, the essence of nationals, oh my gosh, if I could just win, this would change everything. That, that I don't have that associated with anymore. So winning it certainly helps being able to win it again. And, and I always believe the first one is the hardest. You know, that's, Brad Huff said that. Uh, a lot of guys that I know that are national champs always said, you have to be in a position to win nationals and lose it to win it again. Um, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard one because it is it's 60 minutes. You know, you just do it one time and can't make a lot of mistakes to be able to win the national title. And so it's not gonna be as emotional but it still sits very high on my want. <laughs> Who's the favorite? Boulder, this January, whatever it is, 12th. We're sitting here today, mid-December. We, we know what we know. The racing's done. Mm. Everyone's going to go do their top secret training camp now and try and get super fit. <laughs> sure. Well, I think it's just a question of, and this is across the board, it's where do you guys have to go? So if you look at all the riders and you, know, you see them and they keep going like this, then there's maybe somewhere for them to go. If you look at them and they've gone like this, you have to ask, is there somewhere for them to go? And for me, I I went like this. And that's because I did a big block coming into the season. And I didn't train hard 
and now you know I have the ability to go hard again and I don't think I've taken a lot out of the tank for me personally looking at training load looking at all the stuff that we do on training peaks there's just not a large amount of interval training there's there is some volume to stay fit but the races have been the only thing that I've done for intensity um, I'm starting to add that stuff in now as planned and so fingers crossed that I've picked my time right and that I'm able to grow from here and, and, and come up. And that's my, that's my plan. You know, it's just you pick your spots and it's like, yeah, okay, I got, I got beat legitimately. Like I know that Tim and Ryan and yeah, these guys beat me. Um, for me, I, I feel as though I have somewhere to go and I'm hoping that it pays off. Let's go to Boulder, man. Mm. I'm ready. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you.